Hi guys, so we're going to look at a new technique today in this video on how to solve differential equations. Now we've already got two techniques. We've got the A-level maths technique, which is separation of variables. We've looked at the integrating factor. Um, and this is the third technique that we're going to look at and that we're going to need to learn for further maths. Um, and it's called complementary function and particular integral. Now the first thing to realise is that the form for our differential equation for this to work is a little bit different. It looks like you could you could actually do the integrating factor if you wanted to on these questions, because you've got do y by the x, some stuff times by y, and a function of x on the right hand side, but specifically this will only work for constant coefficients on the left hand side. Okay? Um, and also we don't need the coefficients for dy by the x to be equal to one. You, you could have a different coefficient there as long as it's a constant. Um, the technique itself is, is really abstract and I think students, the first time they see it, do, I remember I, when I did it, I was like, what's going on here? I freaked, I freaked out a little bit. But don't panic, like it's actually quite a nice standard method. Once we've done a few of these, you'll get into it. I probably will explain a little bit about how it's working, but I won't go into too much detail into why it works. There's a proof and a really good explanation at the end of the booklet, and I would, I would honestly recommend that you look at that, because I think if we can see why it works, it will help us to remember. Okay, so the first example we're going to look at, we've got dy by the x uh, plus 2y is equal to e to the x. And the standard method, it's actually in two parts. So the first thing we'll do is we'll find the complementary function. Now for the complementary function, what we're doing is essentially we're ignoring what's on the, on the right hand side. So for our complementary function, we're going to solve like a simplified version of this differential equation. So we're going to say dy by the x plus 2y would be equal to zero. So you always just set the right hand side equal to zero. Now I'm gonna because this is the first example, I'm gonna talk quite a bit about this, but we'll in the second one I'll do I'll show you like the exam style way of doing it, like in a nice quick way. Okay. Now look at this differential equation. How could we solve this? Possibly pause for a second and think about how to pause uh, how to solve this differential equation. And you could actually because we've got equal to zero, we could separate variables on this, couldn't we? If you if you look at it, we could just write this as dy by the x equals minus 2y, so 1 over y dy would equal minus 2 dx. Once we've separated ln y would equal minus 2x plus a constant, and y would equal e to the minus 2x plus a constant. We wouldn't leave it like that. Remember, we've seen this before. When you've got e to the minus 2x, when these two terms are being added in the power, you can write it as a multiple. And the reason why is because this e is just a constant, so c is just a constant, so that's just a constant, and we use, typically would write it as a. Okay, so that that's one way of doing it. Like If, if we're looking for the complementary function, which is basically we ignore the right hand side, set it equal to zero, one way of solving this is just to separate variables. And you can do that if you want, but it's a little bit long-winded. And to be, I should have mentioned this, actually, the main reason why we're looking at this technique, complementary function in particular in school, in the next booklet, and when we do second-order differential equations, we're going to have to use this method. So complementary function in particular in school is typically used on second-orders, but we're introducing it with first-orders, just to ease you into the technique. Um, <clears throat> and if you were going to solve a second-order, you wouldn't be able to separate, um, you wouldn't be able to integrate like we just did here. Okay, so there is another way of us getting this complementary function. <clears throat> so look at, let's look at the differential equation. Like when we're trying to solve this, like don't lose sight of the fact that you're just looking for some sort of function. Now, what this equation is telling me, it it, it might look a bit bonkers, but it's it's actually really straightforward. Like two times by a function plus its derivative, and the answer is zero. Like. And what this is telling us when we solve this, by the way, is that, yeah, it's going to be an exponential that solves this equation. And think about why that works. Like, if I if I tried a polynomial, for example, so if I said, well, if y was x squared, dy over dx would be 2x, and then is that ever going to be equal to 0 when I combine those two together? So you'd have 2x uh, plus 2 lots of x squared. And like that... That you could solve that and get a specific value, but that's not true for all values of x, is it? Like that is not true. This does not equal zero like all of the time for any any value of x that we want to use. So that 
Oh, clearly he's not right, is it? I mean, could we try it with a sine function? Like, would, would a sine function satisfy this equation? It wouldn't be always true. So if y equals sine x, the derivative would be cos x. So are they ever going to cancel each other out and we'd just be left with 0 cos x plus 2 sine x equals 0? No, I mean, clearly not. Like, what... I'm possibly over egging this a little bit, guys, but, but what what we really need to realise here is that the complementary function is always going to be an exponential equation. And like, let's just check, like, if I sub this in, do they cancel out and give me zero? So if I say y equals a to the minus 2x, divided by the x, would be minus 2a e to the minus 2x. And when we combine these two together, dy by the x plus 2y minus 2a e to the minus 2x plus 2a e to the minus 2x. That does cancel each other out and we do get 0, which is what we wanted. Okay, <laughs> and, and just trust me that when you're solving the complementary function, the only type of function that you will ever get that when you combine it, and the reason why this works, by the way, don't forget, is when you, the great thing about exponentials is, is essentially when you differentiate them, they stay the same. So that allows us to have a function and its derivative, which are both the same function with just different multiples in front. And there'll be a specific value of a, in this case, where they cancel out each time and we're left to zero, okay? Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a different way of thinking about this. Like if you just trust me that it's always going to be an exponential, we don't need to integrate like this. So when you're trying to find your complementary function, and we could just say, all right, for this complementary function, I'm going to say, I know it's going to be some sort of exponential. Okay. And if we know it's going to be an exponential, we can just differentiate it and sub it in and see what happens. So dy by the x. If I differentiate this, k is the constant multiple, so the exponential power stays the same. And because I'm differentiating, I multiply by that coefficient. So now I know that here's my function and here's my derivative. And if I sub it into this equation, look what happens. we get this, which is equal to zero, and we've got common factors that we can take out. So both of these have got a common factor of a, both of these have got e to the kx. By taking a factor out, it makes it a lot easier to think about, so all we're left with is k plus two. So we've got two things to answer together, and the answer is zero. We know the exponential function doesn't equal zero, so therefore the solution must be when k plus 2 would be equal to 0. So we get k equals minus 2, so I know that my complementary function must be a e to the minus 2x. And we got that before by separating the variables and integrating, but trust me, this technique here is going to be a lot quicker when we get used to doing this, because we can do an even shorter version of this in the next example. Okay, so we've got our complementary function halfway there. We need to get our particular integral. Okay, now for the particular integral, we we don't ignore what's on the right hand side. We have to very closely look at what's on the right hand side. And in the booklet, there's a guide to different types of particular integrals. Um, so what we're now looking for is two times by a function and its derivative, and the answer is equal to e to the x. I'll say that again. Okay, so for the particular integral. We're looking for a, a function of y that fully satisfies this whole differential equation. What sort of function could that be? So we've got two times by the function, we've got its derivative, and the answer is an exponential. Maybe pause and think about that for a second. I mean, the honest, uh, the honest answer is it's, it's obviously got to be an exponential, hasn't it? Like, if you've got a function and its derivative and it becomes an exponential, then that the original function has to be an exponential. And because when we differentiate exponentials, the power stays the same. I know it's going to be some sort of e to the x. I don't know how many, so let's just say b e to the x. 
Now, once you've decided what your particular integral is, you have to sub it into the differential equation. Before we can sub it in, let's differentiate it. And because it's e to the x, we'd multiply by 1 and it stays the same. Okay, so first step, look at the right hand side, decide what your particular integral is. Second step, differentiate it and sub it into your differential equation. So we've got dy by dx, which is b e to the x plus 2y, which is also b e to the x, and then that equals e to the x. So look what we've got, we've got 3b e to the x equals 1e e to the x, and then we just equate coefficients on both sides. So let's compare how many e to the x's have we got on the left, how many e to the x's have we got on the right. So we know that 3b must equal 1, which gives me b is equal to 1 third. So I know my particular integral would be 1 third e to the x. Okay, so we, we're basically there guys. Once we've got our complementary function and we've got our particular integral, our general solution would be y equals a e to the minus 2x plus 1 third e to the x. You just add them both together to get your full solution. Okay. Um, I think let's check that, like, because this is the first example and there's a lot going on, let's just check that that works then. So if I got this as my general solution to this differential equation, how would I know that would be correct? Because essentially what we're saying here is there's, there's a, a first order differential equation and the original function, if you times it by two and you add its derivative, the answer is just e to the x. And I'm telling you guys now that, okay, the solution to this differential equation looks like this. And this, this full equation will, will satisfy this differential equation. I don't know what A is, but obviously I'd need a bit more information. Like just like when you whenever you solve a differential equation, they'd give you like a, a, you know an x value and a y value, and then you could figure out what the actual particular solution is. But I've just got the general solution, so let's check. Let's check that it works. So if I'm saying that's my general solution. derivative of that would be minus 2a e to the minus 2x plus 1 third e to the x and if I substitute this into this differential equation look what happens minus 2a e to the minus 2x plus 1 third e to the x plus 2 lots of a e to the minus 2x plus 1 third e to the x must equal e to the x. They cancel. And we knew that was going to happen. <laughs> With the complementary function, right, because we're saying, well, there's some bits that when you, if you had it in your equation, let's think, there's a, there's a nice way we can think about this, actually, right? Essentially, what's happened with this, this part, this complementary function, looking at the right-hand side, you would have never known it was there, would you? Like, Because the right-hand side hasn't got any e to the minus 2x's in it. But the reason why it hasn't is because that's the special type of part of our full solution that when you sub it in, it, it disappears, they cancel each other out, so you'd never know they were there. It's almost like, you know, when you're solving a differential equation, and, and when we say integrate, you have to remember a constant, because when you find your constants, um, sorry, because when you differentiate, the constant disappears, and you would have never known it was there. That's a bit like what this is like. Like we would have never known that was there just from looking at the right hand side it, because it disappears within the combination of this function and its derivative on the right hand side, on the left hand side. <clears throat> but you still need it there because it, it does satisfy the equation, doesn't it? And then obviously we've got one third <clears throat> plus two thirds, so we, yeah, that is e to the x equals e to the x. So that, that is verified that that is the solution of our differential equation. Okay. <clears throat> Hopefully, not too much waffle there. I'm trying to explain something fairly abstract. In the next video, we'll just do like a succinct method, and this is like exam technique. So you basically, this is how you should answer it in the exam. Okay, um, so yeah, I'm going to stop the video here. Watch the next one, and then we'll do some proper practice on exam style questions, guys.